Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! This week, the government saw off an attack from those dubbed anti-press campaigners across all parties in the House of Commons. The idea of making newspapers who haven't signed up to the approved regulator Impress pay the costs of any actions brought against them, whether they lose or win, has been dropped. And the government has made clear there will not be a Leveson inquiry too, to examine the relationship between the police and the press, and the behaviour of social media, and the dissemination of fake news. The government and the press may have won this latest battle, but campaigners against press tactics think they can still win the war. Now, on Monday, the Data Protection Bill goes back to the House of Lords, and it's possible they could overturn the government's victory by reinstating the amendment, again calling for Leveson Mark II, thus giving the Commons a second chance to back them. Well, campaigners in the Lords and outside Parliament, and indeed uh, the protester at the U Vision Song Contest last night, argue that many from the press have not changed their ways, as shown most recently by the behaviour of some journalists towards victims and hospitals after the Manchester bombing. The question, has the government let the press off the hook? Are they back to their bad old ways, Evan Harris? Well, they never left their bad old ways. So the simple question is, yes, they're still doing the sort of unethical things that they did before. The Kerslake report, an independent report into the Manchester bombing, showed that there was harassment and intrusion into injured people, their families, the bereaved. We saw it at the Shoreham Air disaster as well, and we had calls from people who survived the Paris shootings uh, where the press were harassing them. And it was the British press. This doesn't happen in other parts of Europe, other parts of Europe which uh, have otherwise similar values to us. It's a uniquely British problem. But what's worse than, even worse than that continuing, is that there's a continuing cover-up of corrupt and criminal conduct that took place in the past with hacking and blagging may still be going on. Well, Hugh Grant described the press as a protection racket for bullies and their big corporate masters. Is he well, right? Well, this, the, the press in this country is generally corporate. So the national newspapers are run by a, a small number, owned by a small number in, in general, of rich men. Uh, and the, even the local press is owned, 80% of it, by large multi-hundred million pound <coughs> corporations. But in terms of the national press, what we've learned recently is that the Sunday Times, who never admitted this to Leveson, employed for 15 years someone to blag the bank account details and the utility bills and phone records of people who's come forward and confessed on the BBC. We heard in court the other day that The Sun employed for 10 years someone who stole the medical records of, um, of, of people who <coughs> children had died or terrorism victims, mm -hmm. and that's never been brought to light. And I've heard that that person who did that worked for the Mail on Sunday, Peter's paper as well. That's all been covered up, so we need and that's tough why Leveson 2 was promised, you to get Peter. to the truth. Let's bring him in. Uh, we need tough regulation. We already have laws against this sort of thing, and they exist, and if they're not enforced, then they should be enforced, and I wouldn't defend any kind of illegal action by anybody in my trade, and I wouldn't attempt to. The point that I would make here is this. If you want to have a strong independent press, then it will have to be commercially successful and independent. There's no other form uh, of a strong independent yeah. press which will be able to, for instance, expose corruption in, in national and local government, something we, we have very little of in this country, largely because of the strength of the press, to pursue all kinds of scandals, such as the Windrush scandal recently exposed, notably by The Guardian and by others, uh, the, 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 the many, many other actions taken by the press and my own sister paper, the Daily Mail, what they did about the, the, the killers of Stephen Lawrence still seems to me to be extremely creditable, and which could not have happened without the power of the press. The exposure of the failure of authorities to do anything about child abuse in recent years, these things again and again have only happened because of the existence of a strong independent press. That doesn't mean that the press is perfect or that it should be immune from criminal prosecution where it breaks the law or immune from all kinds of other censure where it does stupid wrong things. I'm not going to try to defend that. But I have to say that I think that the motives of some of the people who campaign against the press are much more to do with destroying and limiting its power to hold power to account 
than actually to, 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 uh, to deal with these scandals, which Evan has mentioned. Yeah, Ma Max Mosley has donated that's, that's, that's four million absolute, pounds to yeah. Impress uh, to help ordinary people get justice. Well, I, I, I'm all in favour of ordinary people getting get, getting justice. Against, How? Against, well, uh, uh, for can't instance, afford to sue. Well, wait a minute. That's the point. That's why you had that idea that the press. Sorry, just let me explain have this. I, have I, because the introduction uh, uh, could was I, wrong. Could I could even just finish my sentence? Let alone my. Had five. Let, let alone. Let alone, let, sentences let alone my thought. Yes, but so that, was on, a column. that was on the previous. And a column in the Thank newspaper. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed. I don't have. See, well, I wonder whether something could be done about that. But anyway, look, let's not worry about that at the moment. The point that I was trying to make is that uh, there is now, uh, following the recent scandals, a much more powerful press regulatory body than there ever oh, was. Rubbish. In the form. Right. So, well, it is. It well, is. It's, 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 it's you've had five more no, You're going to say rubbish. It's demonstrably more. I'll explain. More it, has the, it has the power to find right. newspapers. How many fines has it done? hasn't yet. Zero in four okay. years. So, How many investigations has it done that could lead to fines? I wouldn't know. Zero in four no. years. How many times has it got a correction on the front page after a front page breach? Zero. How many arbitrations, low-cost arbitrations? How many low-cost... Well, I've studied it. No. You haven't. You should try that. Uh, how many low-cost arbitrations has it done in the two years it's run its scheme? Zero. <coughs> so what, even the Press Complaints Commission managed one investigation into hacking where it accused the Guardian, Other people, not the news of the world. Let's return to you two. I'm delighted you're both, you're both here. It's fascinating to, to listen to those sides of the argument. Lord Attlee, the government. It's your government, isn't it? Your government? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They've bottled it, haven't they? I mean, David Cameron's friendship with Rebecca Brooks, many people were very sceptical about that, the relationship between the Sky... You're nodding here. The Sky executive and, and uh, Jeremy Hunt. Um, Theresa May's dinners with, with Paul Dacre. Um, are you embarrassed or are you ashamed? I'll, I'll return to that. Yes, I am embarrassed, seriously embarrassed. Just turning on Peter's point, the first point Peter made about the importance of the press. I agree absolutely with everything that Peter has said, but no one has explained to me why this new system of press regulation, the Leveson system, um, will do anything to impede the press's ability <coughs> to do exactly what Peter said it should do. Uh, turning to your question, um, yes, I am embarrassed. Why has it happened? Why? Lack of moral courage at the highest level in government. Simple as that. We had the Leveson, in we had the Leveson inquiry, which was, which was set up after terrible events. So Brian Leveson told us what we should do, we did it, we had the Royal Charter, we ha which, and we had the press recognition panel that determines whether an approved regulator meets the test set in the Royal Charter. We set that up, we then had an, one approved regulator come along, there could be another approved regulator, if the News Media Association wanted to set one up, they could, provided it was compliant with the tests, they could be uh, uh, the approved regulator. And all the government had to do was to sign the order commencing Section 40 of the Crime and Courts Act. Parliament had already decided. On the 18th of March 2013, the House of Commons voted to put in place Section 40. And the vote was 530 against 13. And it was properly debated, and they took into account the advent of social media and online media. Let me pull you back. Why do they lack this moral courage? Are, are, are they afraid of the press barons? Um, I suspect they believe that if you pat a crocodile on the head, it will be nice to you. But actually, Peter's role in society is to be an absolute pain in the posterior. Everything I suggest, <laughs> he is supposed to criticise. If I do something wrong, if I misconduct myself, his job is to expose it ruthlessly. Will we, uh, Emily, do you think we'll still be able to expose it ruthlessly? Um, not if Section 40 and Leveson 2 go ahead. I mean, Section 40 has already been... Um, What's going to stop us, Peter, journalists like him, exposing things well, ruthlessly? Section 40, it would be disastrous for the press because but it would say that if an in individual takes a newspaper to court, that the newspaper would have to pay the cost for that person, win or lose. That is disastrous. Only if they didn't offer arbitration. But it, that, Why don't they just offer the arbitration? The principle is it, that is disastrous. Why not but offer the, arbitration? So the, then Why the, force the alternative then is that they have to sign up to impress. And no, or, no or national newspaper has signed up to no, impress. Because uh, or any other independent regulator. But impress will offer them low-cost 
arbitration. But impress so is state approved, well. and newspapers on principle do not want to sign up to a state approved regulator. But what if bank, what that if would banks undo didn't want to over sign up 300 years of press freedom in the UK. No, let me say, 300 years of press freedom in the UK. If newspapers have to sign up to impress, that is a huge state approved regulator. Let me say, 300 years of press freedom in the UK. If newspapers have to sign up to impress, that is a state approved regulator. Let me say, 300 years of press freedom in the UK. If newspapers have to sign up to impress, that is a state backed regulator. I know you'll say it isn't, but that's 1695 was the last time we had state interference in uh, the press in the UK. And that would, on principle, newspapers will not sign up to that, rightly so, because even though our government at the moment might not have much to do with the press or might not have much interference, the threat of that would be there. And that would be disastrous for newspapers. And that is why none of them have signed up to impress. Section 40 and Leveson 2 as well would be absolutely disastrous for press. And the thing that actually strikes me the most importantly about Leveson 2 and Section 40 is that it is not backed by public. There's no public backing for it. People do not want it. There was a public consultation last year. 174,000 people responded. That is an over... It depends a huge which you look at. Uh, that was a public consultation. But people but responded. People... It doesn't matter. But that's... You're, no, what you're saying matter. is that they... It does matter. They we don't do in coupons policy because they by newspaper coupons. Because it was a public consultation on a Sorry, public inquiry. People. people said, we do not want it. 79% of those people said Section 40 absolutely Let me not. keep it over here, Emily. And I want to speak to Rebecca as well, Reporters Without Borders. Where You have this... Um, this index, don't you, about press freedom in particular yeah. countries. Where are we? The UK is embarrassingly at 40th out of 180 countries. 40. 40th. Where, who's at the top? Uh, Norway. Do they have press regulation? Well, some of, the, some of the best performers on our index have some degree of state regulation. However, it's very uh, specific country by country. What they don't have is this hostile attitude towards the press of public officials. They do not have this toxic discourse. So that the we ecology have at the Britain. moment is very toxic, is it? So it is. It is. We find it very toxic. This is, um, this is one of many reasons for the UK's poor ranking. There are others, of course, but um, this continued demonising of the entire press based on the sometimes unethical, sometimes illegal behaviour of individual journalists, which definitely should be held to account and is held to account. The reason that we know about these things is because our press is working, because our system is working. But continue, continuing to demonise the entire press and prevent them from doing their jobs is, is hurting, actually, the public. It is going to lead to widespread self-censorship. It is going to lead to fewer stories um, on, on risky things like corruption, like human rights what, abuses okay, why is that, that are going in the to public happen? interest. What you say about the hostile environment, of course, used in another context, and you believe there's a hostile environment yes. in terms of uh, journalism, in terms of the press. In terms what, of the public, the, the, the attitude of public officials towards the press. Towards the press. A kind of a corrosion yes. or an erosion, whatever it is. What's going to stop an investigative journalist revealing the contents of the Panama Papers? Well, first of all, um, the financial burdens that would be imposed, um, possibly under Section 40. But really, the most devastating impact will be self-censorship. That is incredibly difficult to pinpoint. That is incredibly difficult to counter. But fewer and fewer people are even going to want to go into journalism. Fewer journalists are going to be willing to take on these stories Powerful people want these things hidden, and it is the role of the press to uncover them. That informs us as a public, that allows us to hold government to account. So what the government has done is not let the, gov let the press off the hook. They have empowered the public to actually make informed decisions and hold them to account. How is that actually in the government's interest? It's in the public's interest. What about that? Burkina Faso is uh, ahead of us. Burkina Faso, one of the worst-ranked countries in West Africa. Just behind They're, us, actually. Just behind yes. us. I do beg your pardon. It changes all the time. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a country which arrested its former president and 32 ministers uh, last year. Not a bad idea in this country, you might say that. But come on, this is ridiculous, Evan. <clears throat> well, Professor Schlossberg's looked into why it is that Britain has a poor reputation worldwide, and it's... In, at least in part due to the fact that it isn't free from the concentrated ownership of the likes of, as I've said before, the Murdochs who own 20-30% you know, of the national press, the Barclay brothers, tax exiles, Lord Rothermere who owns, uh, who pays tax in France, who owns Peter's mail group papers. That's one of the reasons why uh, Britain is so low. It's not due to any regulation because as Rebecca rightly said, the Scandinavian countries have co-regulation of their press of the sort that Leveson recommended. And they are at the top of the league and have always been so because there's nothing that Leveson suggested that would impede any of the investigative and public interest journalism. But it might give some remedy to the poor families of Manchester victims hounded and intruded upon by the press. Alexander which... Nix's family, the head of uh, Cambridge Analytica, they were, they were hounded, right or wrong? What, families of individuals? The family of Alexander Nix, and he was hounded. Is that wrong. right or I mean, wrong? Wrong. And if people have the wealth to go to law, that's their lookout. But what, who we, we represent people who can't afford expensive lawyers to take newspapers to court. There is no remedy. If it was any other industry, 
the newspapers would be saying, how dare the government cancel an inquiry into corruption uh, uh, and cover-up? How dare they? So no, because no, it's their no, own no one's industry, family should be handed under any it. circumstances. A quick response, Peter, then we'll go to the audience. Now, Professor, I'll get, get, get you in in a minute, because your paper was mentioned and you were mentioned by Evan, so it's right to go to you. Well, it, it's, it, it is inevitable in the course of, 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 the, of, of any inquiry that some, some press inquiries that people will sometimes overstep the mark. And when they do so, there are, you know, if they break the criminal law, they should be punished for it. And if they, if they break ethical boundaries, then they should be punished for it too. I'm not going to argue against that. But I think that the, these cases in, is, are a, great, a typical example of hard cases making bad law. I'm not at all sure that hacked off motives really come from a, d a desire to worry about small individuals. Where do they uh, come from then? Well, I think they may come from a desire among certain celebrities who, who, are, who are unhappy about the way in which they've, they've been treated by the press. I think we have to be careful about, about allowing these desires to become the, the, the motive behind the creation of a system of press regulation from which this country has been free for centuries. Once you begin to get government interference in the press, there is no end to it. And once the government is able to interfere in the press, then the press's power to hold the government to account is diminished. I, I think it's a very you. simple point. No one's suggesting. Can, can I come in on this? First of all, the power of the state to interfere in the press. In the House of Lords, I challenged Lord Black and at least four QCs as to how the state can interfere in the system of press regulation. And there was no answer, because they can't. On section 40, let's have a look at the detail. We talked about, very expertly, about the stick. Let's talk about the carrot. Now, suppose Peter has written a really unhelpful article about a Russian oligarch, Mr Ivan Oktobolikov. Very unhelpful, <laughs> makes all I'm, sorts... I'm not sure about the Sunday morning language, but there we are. <laughs> Good name. Un unhelpful to whom, by the way? M m m this, this, this Russian oligarch. Oh, to him, okay? right. Mr... Uh, he's, yes, Mr Ivan Oktobolikov. Now, he's not very happy about this, so what he does, he puts a million pounds into his lawyers on account. His lawyers write to Paul Dacre and say they're not happy about your article, and will you please give him a quarter of a million pound compensation and a guarantee of not um, uh, repeating the story. And Mr Dacre, if your paper was signed up to an approved regulator, would refer him to Section 40 of the Crime and Courts Act, which says that the claimant will pay all his own costs, win or lose, and your advice to, the, to Mr. The, 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 the oligarch, whose name I shouldn't say, um, should take it to the approved regulator, take it to arbitration, and if Peter has made a slight error, then we can agree how that will be compensated and corrected. And also, on compensation, most of the time, it's, it will always be possible for the press to correct anything that they put wrong by means of an apology with due prominence. And due prominence is a matter for the approved regulator to determine. Could I just ask no, a no, small question I just want to add, add a, 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 a point here, because I think, honestly, okay. the, um, uh, with the greatest respect to my colleagues, and I have enormous respect with, for, for Peter as a journalist, but the hypocrisy and duplicity that has been vocalised in the name of press freedom on this issue is, quite frankly, astonishing. Yeah. For one thing, what we are seeing here is the government in making this decision not to allow Leveson to complete his inquiry, to do what he was set out to do, is complicit. The government is being complicit in a massive cover-up. Yeah, we yeah. know that. Yep. that. And for people, for people who are championing press freedom to actually advocate for that cover-up to continue and not be looked into is astonishing. The other yeah, thing to say... No, I'm going to finish my point. Thing, the reporters were about Broader's um, article about the UK's in 2018 ranking makes most prominent the issue of the fact in this country we have one of the most repressive official secrecy regimes in the democratic world. That is the main reason, according to their own analysis, why the UK ranks so low. And where is the noise from the national press about that? The, virtually not a word is raised about the problems of our national security legislation and how it chills, really chills journalism. The third no, thing to say... It, because it, they exercise proper judgment. And, well, the third thing to say is, and, 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 and my Peter, even though I disagree profoundly with many of his views, because he he's always shouts at the first whiff of corruption, 
the fact is, our newspapers, one of the reasons why Denmark ranks number 10 on that index is because it has a proper system of state-backed regulation. Even Ireland, who ranks more than 20 places above us, has a much more statutory-backed system of, of press regulation than we have. And what they don't have is a deeply corrupt press that for decades has done much more than the examples that Peter talked to, has produced nothing other than propaganda and stenography on behalf of the state, mixed with a diatribe of racist, misogynistic See, that's hate the point. That's Emily, could, could, what you're saying. Is it possible? I just have to put Can I, can to I, answer I, can I ask you to hold that thought? It's lost. Can I ask you to hold... It won't sure, get lost. Okay. It won't get lost. I promise you it won't get lost. <laughs> I, I did promise the audience I'd go to them in a second, and I, I don't... I'm to speak to John, but my, my guarantee to you is as... Uh, and the, the regulator can hold me to account... Mm. Ofcom. That's our regulator. Mm. I will come back to you. Emily, likewise. Your last comment, oh. Oh, <laughs> your last comment is really revealing because actually what you're saying is that, and you represent a lot of the anti-press lobby, is, is actually a dis... You, no, actually, you most, don't of public, like. most of the public no, by poll. The, not most of the, most yeah, of the people... public by poll, but most of the public didn't want Leveson 2. Leveson 2 is being pushed That's by MPs, true. unelected That's lords, true. rich Emily, and I'll be right back people. with you. In the audience, yes, sir, what would you like to say? In the blue shirt, first of all. And, John, I'll be with you in, in one moment. In the blue shirt, right in front of the what, guy. What, what, what the main thing that is, the main thing that is being ignored is the fact that um, the British people are being abused here by the press. The press doesn't need any more power than it already has. Okay, the lady from Borders with our reporters would attest, see what journalists go through in some countries over the world um, for just doing their job. And you have this country where they have all the powers and all the resources to do their job, and what do they do? They abuse this. We've seen this time and time over, um, the Hillsborough disaster. The Manchester victims, the, how they were hounded, how Milly Dowler's phone, how even Corbyn is uh, uh, portrayed in the media. There's no respect and there's no ethics there. It's, it, can you see the problem? And the certain uh, the politicians and certain aspects of the media have gotten too close. And what what, what happens there is they get a get um, get out of get out of free get out of free. Get, get out, out of jail, jail free get card. Get out of jail free card. <laughs> and when that happens... Well, they should be going they, into they, jail they, free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, 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 do what, they do whatever they want, so the, okay. press need, the press needs to be regulated. John, what happened to you, of course, because this, this follows on. This follows on, John Kelly, kind of from that point, the way the press behave. Your niece, Abigail uh, Witchell's uh, paralysed in a stabbing, the daughter of Baroness Hollins. Now, I know you, you, you're saying that the press, just to paraphrase, if I may, the press weren't malicious but they were overbearingly intrusive. Give us an idea of what that was like. <clears throat> well, they, they had journalists parked in cars uh, outside the driveway to the house, uh, trying to get photographs every time, trying all sorts of pretenses to, <clears throat> to get into the house to, to see what was going on. Uh, we believe they were hacking phones of uh, members of the wider family to try and pick up information. Uh, they were bribing public officials to give them information. Uh, and this has never been investigated because we never took any, um, the family never took any uh, legal action. So it's, the, it's victims like us, if you like, and there are far worse than, than my family, uh, who, who want to see Leveson part two because we want to see all this come out. And frankly, journalists and politicians are the two lowest ranked occupations on the world of uh, the sort of United Kingdom veracity index as published by Ipsos Mori. That's because what Rebecca's saying, the environment Th They are, and the perhaps, reason so. is because of their behaviour. Because of their behaviour, Rebecca. Yeah. And no, Peter no, in a second. It's not just that. So our index Well, what about that behaviour? How, how do you stop that? Through a robust system that works, and I would argue that our system does work. That we have, yes, we have some problematic people that need to be held to account. But it carries on. But we on. have one of the, the most vibrant media environments in the world as well. We have some of the most excellent reporting coming from but this the country Manchester as well. report, Lord Kerslake's report, absolutely disgusting behaviour, telling and people, it should be people held to account, but the this death is of not... people's children had not been confirmed, and journalists but were telling the them their children were dead. The answer is not to silence the independent press that is trying to do its job, that is exposing these very things. Um, it was mentioned, mentioned that we work around the world. Yes, that's very true we work in countries with abysmal climate I work on that personally every day but that's exactly why I'm so passionate about trying to hold the United Kingdom to the same standards right it is not unthinkable that this toxic Norway. that this toxic media bashing environment actually can translate into physical violence right. we are seeing that across the EU where investigative reporters are being attacked with alarming that's a totally frequency. different that issue. can happen here too and it is a separate issue. Issue. Is that, that a totally different that? issue totally different anyone? issue and so much is, is 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 mixed up in the confusion here because a, a lot of what uh, <laughs> One of the issues that people like Rebecca talk about, which, is, which I don't like about what they associate with Leveson, is journalists being woke up in the middle of the night and arrested and, and the, 
potential chilling factor that exists. That wasn't the Leveson inquiry. That was the police investigations. They are two separate things. The police, in, the Leveson inquiry did not cost £50 million pounds as been mooted by the press. It cost £5 million. It was the police investigations. And the reason why we need to have Leveson 2 is because we know that the police are implicated in some of this cover-up or elements of the police. Peter Hitchens. <laughs> Peter Hitchens, I know we've... Yeah, I mean, I, sum it up. There was a previous yeah, so point. I, May I pick I, that one up the, as well? The, first of all, and the point that Lord Attlee was making uh, about the, the, the possibility of going to a regulator instead of being pursued by the fictional oligarch you invented. What fascinates me about that, that contrast is why would anybody be so anxious to have what is ultimately a state-controlled regulator rather than, rather than accepting uh, self-regulation? Uh, why is it so important to them? If it, as, as, as I so often say, if it's important to them, it's important to me. I believe there are people in this country who would like to see a state-regulated press, and I think that we should frustrate it's them. Not us. We should frustrate them. I think if I could finish, we press. could... Well, you, are, you don't not, even want to let me finish. You, you, you'd love to have me state-regulated. <laughs> but but the, 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 I love, I love the, you talking the, the, nonsense. The, the, the more you should have the power <laughs> to go on and do that uncensored. OK, well, if perhaps you could tell me what nonsense I've just said. Uh, You've just said that Leveson proposed state regulation. I didn't, Not actually, state regulation. I didn't, I didn't. It's independent self-regulation. What no. you want is this it's under scheme, a royal... which is the press marking its own homework. And if it was any other industry, on, on, or on, MPs on, or the I police, you, asked, you'd say, I, I how asked, dare you be self-regulated? I asked you to explain what I said was nonsense, rather you than said have, that have another long speech. People like me have another state regulation. Long that is speech. nonsense. I've answered your question. I didn't, uh, Move on. Another long speech. I've answered what your is, question. What is, what is a royal charter? If it is not state regulation, why is a royal charter involved if the state is not it's involved? Not a sta that's it's not a state obvious, it's obviously state regulation. Let me say something. Let me say something. Quiet, everyone. Quiet, everyone. If I could, if I could, everyone, complete, my everyone. <laughs> if I could complete my point. Just, it's right in the heart of your point, the question I'm going to ask you, Peter. The BBC, before anyone starts sneering, look at any poll, is the most trusted deliverer of news in this country and it is s regulated by an independent regulator, Ofcom. What's state it regulator. Indeed. State regulator, thank Indeed. you. In state regulator, in there in you go. In Indeed. Happy I, days. Well, I, 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 what, what people are prepared to trust is quite interesting, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but I, I can't, I, I'm not going to get, that's a, that's a subjective thing. I'm trying to stick to, to, to the objective. I've been a, a journalist since 1973 and on national newspapers since 1977. I personally, by the way, in the middle of a family tragedy, ex experienced some press harassment, so I know what people are talking about. I don't, I, I object to it, and I'm against it, uh, absolutely and fundamentally. So you, 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 won't, you, you don't need to persuade me on that. I think people do behave badly sometimes. But what I can tell you for certain is that in all that time since 1973, the behaviour of and the self-discipline of the press over this kind of thing has increased and increased and increased. And we feel very, very strongly about this at the moment and the amount of care now being taken in newspaper offices, which was not being taken 10 or 15 years ago, and it's true, over this sort of thing. How do you explain Manchester? I, 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 how, 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 how do I explain Manchester? I don't know, have you, have you, I'm, not, I'm not going to try to explain Manchester. I'm just, stating a general, Manchester. I'm just stating a general truth which is, known, general to, which is, which is known to me. It's not a fact. It's, known, it's, it's known, your it's, it's opinion. Known, no, it's and no, your it's opinion known, is not supported by the evidence. Okay. Because the regulators... You carry on. No fines, no investigations, no equal prominence front page corrections, no low-cost arbitration, zero. So it's not regulated. And the press continues to abuse Emily, them. how bad was Manchester? Well, Come on, Evelyn how keeps bad talking was about Manchester? Evidence, but there has been no evidence provided that supports this claim that journalists and... Our newspapers, on the whole, acted really badly at Manchester. Lord, there's Lord no evidence for it. Lord, Cos, there was Cos no Lakes evidence. Report. There was no evidence backed up that journalists went into hospitals. There are suggestions from individual cases that things happened, and journalists that individually might have acted there out. There were corroborated witness accounts. I mean, it's astonishing the level the of evidence. The report found no you, evidence for it. It's astonishing that the level of evidence. It's astonishing, astonishing no evidence. what you call evidence in that report and what it's, journalists routinely no, call it, evidence when they write, write all sorts of smear articles and, the and all sorts of propagandistic nonsense on the most flimsy of Manchester. Anybody, if anybody, if, if, can't we all agree? If anybody is, is proved to have done these terrible things, then they should be punished. For but there has, but there's Absolutely. no evidence. No regulation. For them. What what is the, but why, there, why do you keep saying that journalists and newspapers acted really Sorry, badly at Manchester and that evidence? Well, Jacob really Rees-Mogg is railing against any form of regulation and state regulation in the newspaper this morning. But Jacob Rees-Mogg has a decent amount of money to actually yeah, deal with yeah, any yeah. problem that Can comes just, his way. A couple of things in the audience, gentlemen in the. 
Lilac. I it's I've nailed it. Lilac <laughs> shirt. I, I feel it's morning. perhaps the affordability of the taking legal action rather than any legal framework or any support from an independent body. Yeah. That's the issue. There's the little no man, legal aid. The little woman. And you, sir, you've had your hand up for a while. Morning. Yeah, I think it's a bit rich from the Daily Mail to kind of claim victory for the Windrush campaign. Mm. I think we'd have to put that on the families. And if you want to talk about toxic, you know, people being toxic, there isn't a toxic environment against journalists. There's a toxic environment against migrants and refugees. Well, and that has mm. come from the Daily Mail. Well, what about that campaign over the Stephen Lawrence <laughs> road, yeah? That was one campaign, but it, it, in the main, if you look at the media for the last 10, 15 years, it's been absolutely atrocious against migrants, and there has been no accountability. And there's been a lot of lies said about migrants and immigration. You point specifically to one newspaper, do you? <coughs> well, there's, there's lots of them. The Sun, the Daily Mail, the Telegraph, or in, in many ways all the right-wing papers, and there is no accountability. Nobody's been held to account to this. And, I, and, and in a sense, all this inquiry is and it's, it's, it's asking a question. It's just saying, well, let's have a look at it. And all our working lives, we're kind of investigated, we're looked at. You know, people at the bottom of the society, like people on benefits, are constantly under the microscope. And yet, people at the top of society, like all these media barons, are let off the hook. It's an intrinsic unfairness, isn't there? That people want a free press, but they want a fair press. <laughs> Uh, the, the thick they want a free press, they want a trusted <coughs> press. And, and that's what I think is absolutely critical in this process. And we're in danger of reading Leveson 2 conclusions. We don't know what the conclusions of that might be. Leveson 1 did not deal with the specific. It was promised that there would be Leveson 2 by Cameron and the government at the time. That promise should be honoured and should be fulfilled. Yeah. We need to be mindful of the conglomeration of ownership of the press, where you've got News UK controlling four national titles, Trinity Mirror seven national titles, The Telegraph two national titles, Lord Rothermere another two national titles. And none of those reflect the diversity that actually exists in our society, political, <laughs> economically or ethnically. Yeah. Oh, well, sorry, could I just ask the lady Leveson, Leveson who kept saying no one, through. no one wants Leveson 2. How many of these no ones are well, there that you know of? What I'm talking about is the public yeah. consultation that asked 174,000 174, people responded, wrote in to the government saying, I'm, and 79% of I, people I, didn't want to I think you have to be very careful when you use a phrase like no one. I like to hear what Jerry McCann has but to all the people say standing about up for what it. happens I know the there are individual cases, but the people who are standing up for Leveson 2 and, and pushing it out and also using the kind of phone hacking and the awful things that the press have done in the past as an excuse are MPs <laughs> They're lords, they're people with access to grind against the press, rich celebrities and powerful people. Well, they Emily, are at why the forefront. Why don't they you want to get to the, 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 the bottom of a cover-up? Why the don't you want to get to the bottom of a cover-up? The things that have why? happened that this are criminal. That question. I'm asking, the things that have happened happen and are... But we don't know. Yeah. As, as a general we, we do know. Leveson won. OK, listen, Lord Atlee, come in here, because I think it's appropriate that you do come in here. And I tried to go to Peter so Peter can respond to what Lord Atlee says, which is... Well, first point is that on motivation... I have never, ever been mistreated by the press. My only complaint is no one's hardly ever heard of me. I did get... I did get... Uh, one the name inch rings on, a bell, Atley. <laughs> I did get one inch on the inside of the uh, page uh, two of the sum when I accidentally cut a £1.6 billion electrification scheme. Um, I had a good go at the performance of Ipso in the House of Lords. Uh, I took them to task. I explained all the difficulties that Evan has referred to and no noble lord was able to correct me. No one said I was wrong. And yet, again, I was up against four QCs and Lord Black, who is a great expert on the media. Can I just say, a third Peter, of, I don't, a third, Peter respond, a third of the lords who voted in favour of the press amendments had been embroiled in their own press scandals. That is not a minor point. The people who are pushing uh, yeah. this do not want the press to Peter hold Peter Hitchens, to last account. word. Something no, no, has to happen. Just... We want... We want oh, you would just want to what? On you are a very, noble lord. That very, <laughs> that very point about the Lords, the Mail <laughs> spent three pa whole pages covering what's gone wrong there. Um, but no one can say how this new system of press regulation would stop those misdemeanours, um, some of the more than misdemeanours, being reported. OK, that, there's it. the answer that you have to give finally as you wrap it up very briefly. Well, I tell you, all, all, all this that, that Lord Attlee and, and Evan Harris wants to happen and more is going to happen because I, this, this has only been a brief setback for their campaign. And when it happens, you'll find out what state press regulation means and you'll wish you hadn't got it. Thank you all very much indeed. <clears throat> but I'm sorry.
sorry, it's not just about the Daily Mail, it's about the entire press. If you have press. something to say about that debate, oh. <laughs> it's about the entire press, so I'm sorry, I know you gave the last word to Peter, but it's not just about the Daily Mail, it's about the Guardian, it's about the Financial Times, it's about it, our excellent British it's media that victim. needs to be free to it's do its job victim. and to well, hold we have, it to we a have a, this, we have, well, we'll have this debate again, but more immediately we have another debate to have and I want to give it sufficient time. Thank you very much indeed. What? One more time, show your appreciation, some excellent points by our front row and our audience.